I know that this is not gonna work for everybody out there, and there are gonna be a lot of you who um, are bike experts, and you will disagree with what I'm about to say because this is not the way you fit your bicycle for when you're riding out in the world, mountain biking, road biking. All right, we're gonna wrap up this technique discussion with the assault bike, or uh, there are lots of different versions out there on the market these days, but essentially a bike that's got some handles and has uh, a big fan that is providing the bulk share of the resistance. Now, people like to call this the devil's bike or the devil's tricycle uh, for good reason. It is really challenging, it packs a punch, and there's really no way to cheat it or hack it or truly become more efficient. Um, certainly with the rowing machine, the skier that you just saw me on, there are ways to make your stroke a lot more efficient, but with this, uh, you know, the fixed resistance, just pedaling with your legs, there's just not a whole lot you can do. However, I have a couple tips for you that I believe will help. And before I go into them, I just want to uh, preface this by saying, I know that this is not gonna work for everybody out there. And there are gonna be a lot of you who um, are bike experts and you will disagree with what I'm about to say because this is not the way you fit your bicycle for when you're riding out in the world, mountain biking, road biking. However, I have found over years of doing this that this can help a lot of people. Even the people that I have met that are the best on this tool make some of these adjustments on the assault bike and they see their power production go up or the efficiency or their perceived effort start to improve. Now. What am I talking about? Well, this is what I typically see people do, okay? Jump on the assault bike, all right? This is their, their position, and they ride. And you might be thinking that looks about right, okay? Couple points. Where the seat is positioned right now, every time I pedal, my arm is fully stretched, and I actually have to rotate my upper body to get all the way out to the end of this pedal stroke, okay? So then I go to the next pedal stroke and I'm reaching out again. And I'm doing this rocking action and basically from here, like the bulk of the stroke or the pedal stroke, my arm is in this position and that's not a very strong position. I mean, if you're gonna have handles, you may as well use those handles. So I would argue that I'm way too far back and this is what I see often. People don't pay attention to where they're at relative to forwards and backwards over the pedals and the handles. So I'm too far back. Secondly, as I'm riding, my leg is always in this like more or less flexed bent position. So my quads are always on tension and the pedal when I'm like, this is where I'm gonna, on my, let's, let's look at my left foot. This is where I'm gonna put force down into the pedal. My foot, the ball of my foot, is about a one, 12 inches, one foot in front of my hip where the power is getting generated from, okay? So I would say that this is not only too far back, but I'm too low for optimal force production and best practices. The settings that I'm at right now are the seat is all the way back, and I'm at a number five. So if you ride the assault bike, you're familiar with these numbers. What I ride at typically, is a nine and I move this seat forward so it's one click shy of all the way forward okay I'm five foot ten and a nine is quite high and people will start to wonder Marcus I think you're wrong here you're too high now what this puts me into a position for is that at the at the place where I'm gonna produce the most force my hip is more or less right over the ball of my foot and I'm at this angle of my knee where I can really drive a lot of force through that. Secondly, you can see that even when I'm at the, the end of my, my, my uh, pedal stroke and the crank arm, I'm always in this position where my arms are kind of close to my sides and I can really use a push and pull. I'm not outstretched out beyond my you know, optimal force production zone. So I can stay more or less over the pedals. My, my leg at the bottom, it's not fully extended, but it's pretty close. 
So I do get a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a break from my quads constantly being blown up and contracted. I'm using my hips more and I can really push and pull with my arms. The last benefit to this type of positioning as I see it is that I'm a little bit more upright, which is gonna help my breathing as opposed to being in that crouch down position where I'm reaching, reaching, and I'm collapsed in my torso, which can make breathing a little bit harder. So this is the position that I have found works for me. And I'm not saying that you need to go with these same numbers by any means, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking you and I'm encouraging you to try raising your seat height, one click, maybe two clicks, move your seat forward, one click or two click, compared to where you typically set it. And once you've done that, you can practice this simple drill, which is pedal for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds, pedal for 30 seconds, rest for 30 seconds. Find a hard but comfortable pace. Do that for four or five rounds, adjust your seat. Do it for four or five rounds, adjust your seat. Do it for four or five rounds, adjust your seat. And just experiment and compare how does it feel to be a little bit higher, a little bit further forward, I hope that helps you. Matter of fact, I hope all of these tips help you. I hope you get involved in our 3030 cardio challenge and put all of these technique tips into practice when you join Persist coming up next week. <laughs>